I've spent tons of time learning about every different way that you can customize VS Code, from your theme, to your font, to extensions, to settings, to shortcuts. So if you wanna take your VS Code from this to this, stick around for the video. All right, we're gonna dive into all of these different facets of customizing in VS Code. This is one of my favorite uh, features of VS Code is just how customizable it is, how easy it is to customize. Not just that you can do a lot of stuff, but that you can do it easily as well. So we're gonna talk about the theme that I use that you can see in here. I get lots of questions about that. The font that I used and one of the fonts that I've used in the past, how to get these fancy, do I have an example of this? The fancy font ligatures uh, here, this little arrow here, I'll show you how to get that. We'll talk about some of the extensions that I use, some of the things that you can use, some of the settings that I have and the shortcuts. So if you want uh, a kind of full in-depth look into uh, VS Code and all of the different features, not just customization that comes with it, I have a course on Udemy, link below, uh, but my friend CodeStacker, Jesse from the CodeStacker channel on YouTube, which you should check out for the VS Code content, he has released his VS Code Superhero course that is gonna walk you through so much more than what I do in this video, everything you wanna know about VS Code, he has it listed in here. You're gonna get uh, videos, uh, the ebook if you, if you buy the bundle deal. There's so much stuff in this course and he uh, was nice enough to give me a 40% off coupon exclusive discount code that's in the link below. So go and check that out if you want to become a VS Code superhero. In the meantime, let's go ahead and get started here. So the very first thing I wanna cover here is the theme. And this is, again, a question I get lots in YouTube comments. Hey, what theme are you using? How do you get those colors? All that sort of stuff. So uh, that's going to be the answer in this video. And uh, really quickly, what this is, is the Cobalt 2 theme. So if you open up your extension tab, and we'll talk more about extensions here in a second, the Cobalt team, <laughs> Cobalt team, the Cobalt 2 theme was created by West Boss. And it's uh, really built on kind of these like this blue and this yellow color. And they work so well together. Um, I just love this theme. I've used this as a default for uh, almost the entirety of my VS Code career, if that's the thing. But however long I've used VS Code, I've almost always used the Cobalt 2 theme. I absolutely love it. Uh, people ask me questions about this all the time as well. So uh, to show you how to do this, um, if I uh, were to uninstall this theme, and I can do this really quickly, uninstall this thing. Now this gets really boring. In your extensions to installing extension, you just go to install. And we'll have a section here on extensions specifically. But in this case, this is just about the theme. Now, if you're interested in other ones, a couple of the other ones I love, uh, the Night Owl theme, this is by Sarah Drasner. The Shades of Purple theme by Ahmad Awaz, if we could pull that up. That one I love too. And the last one is Winter is Coming from John Papa. So those are some of my favorites. Uh, you can install them pretty easily, check them out, and uh, really customize and give yourself a pretty cool look and feel to your editor. And I'm going to go ahead and set uh, my theme back to Cobalt 2. Cool. So that is my theme. Now, next up is my font. So let's look at a section of code in here. Let me get rid of all of these extension tabs. Let's look at a section of code. And this piece of code comes from actually a video series on the Auth0 YouTube channel, which you should check out. And in that series, we build an authenticated to-do app with Next.js, Airtable, and Auth0. So if you like the content that I do on my channel, uh, go and check out the Auth0 channel too, because I'll be doing a lot of content there. So just looking at the code here, you see uh, some of these fancy font ligatures. I'll show you where that is in a second. But uh, maybe you notice that this font just like looks a lot different than what would be the default one as it should. So the font that I'm using in this case is we can just search for this uh, font family is Cascadia code. So you can come into your browser and you can search for Cascadia code. And this is a free one by Microsoft. So you can go and you can follow the instructions on uh, the GitHub uh, repo here. You can download Cascadia code and then you simply just say inside a font family, that's the one that I want to use. Now, I do want to show you another one, which is Fira code. This is another free, uh, free one that uh, they have instructions on this GitHub repo as well. So you can do, uh, you can set or install that one on your machine and then uh, go in and set your font. And then notice this will look a little bit different here. I have been using Cascadia code. I always want to say Cascadia JS. I've been using Cascadia code for a few months now and I absolutely love it. So this is the one that I think I'm going to stick with. And the last part of this is that I've got uh, my font ligatures turned on. I don't know why this is, why would I edit? I don't know why this is not editable, editable in the regular settings, but font ligatures in this case is turned on. So I've got this set to true. 
So font ligatures, again, will take these two characters, those two, and it will combine them into this one arrow. Then you have things like the triple equals or the double equals, stuff like that. I just think those are cool. Sometimes they're a little confusing for other people who've never seen them before, but I think they're great. So, all right. So uh, that's kind of like how you customize like the pretty aspect of VS Code, your theme, your font, adding font ligatures if you want to. Now, the next aspect of this is uh, similar. It's installing extensions, but it's not just installing extensions for uh, visual things. It's for actual functionality in here. So I'm just going to scroll through and show you some of uh, my favorites in here. Uh, the auto rename tag, if you rename the start of, um, of a tag in HTML, it'll do the bottom one as well. I've got one for better comments. This allows me to give, let's see. If I do a comment of to do, it highlights it orange. That way, if I'm scanning through my code, I can really see that thing pop. Uh, bookmarks to set bookmarks in your code as you jump through them. Uh, the Cobalt theme you see here. Uh, debugger for Chrome for debugging. What else do we have? Some snippets. That's a great way to customize your setup in VS Code as well as install a snippet extension. In this case, this one is for React. And I use this one all the time. The RFC will do a React component and sub that out for me. That one's really nice. And then I also wanted to share like whatever specific um, technologies you work with, you can probably find an extension to work with those things inside of VS Code as well. So I've been doing a lot of work with FaunaDB recently. Uh, if you do anything with GitHub, there's that GraphQL to support uh, like GraphQL IntelliSense and coloring. Uh, there's what else that I want to show. There's a Netlify one that I have installed here. So all in all, like with that section of extensions, any technology that you work with, check to see if VS Code has an extension for it. And they might, and then you might be able to leverage it there. Uh, the live server extension, this is one I use all of the time. Live share extension is amazing. So this is really where the power and beauty in VS Code comes from, is by having these extensions where you can add pieces of functionality as well as design or visual aspects to your VS Code as well. Just scroll through, search, look for whatever you're interested in or whatever you work with. You'll probably find something that will help your workflow and really customize VS Code to be the most powerful for you. All right, next up, we've looked at this uh, just for a second, but under the gear icon and then settings or command comma or control comma, Mac versus Windows, you can find all of your settings. So this is where I set my font family. Uh, you can set the font size. You can set a zoom level so if i take this up to four this is going to zoom the entire thing in really quickly and the thing i like most about vs code is when i make these changes vs code is built with html css and javascript using electron so as i change these things they instantly take place and you can kind of see what changes there i always thought that was uh, really really amazing honestly i think that's one of the coolest things about vs code uh, i've got settings for auto save for your cursor style. So I think I actually moved it to line, but I wanna go back to uh, block. So there's, oh, actually I don't like that. That's a little bit too thick of a block. So I'm gonna change that back to uh, line here. And this looks a little bit more like what I expected. I think that was a little too big. All right, and then uh, just scrolling down, one of the useful ones in here is this exclude section, which will allow you to exclude certain types of files inside of your file explorer. So this is probably not what you wanna do. But if you wanted to ignore all, um, let's see, JS files, you could put in a pattern like this. Notice those JS files don't so, show up. So I'm gonna make sure I get rid of this and don't save that because I don't. Uh, I do want to see my JavaScript files since I do a lot of JavaScript development, but that is one of the cool things that you can do. So there's all different types of customization uh, capabilities inside of here, inside of your settings. The one thing I do wanna show specifically is the title bar or the window title up here. So there's all these different things, uh, all these different uh, kind of built-in variables inside of VS Code that you can use. And what you can do is, where do I, oh, here, right here. So right here, I'm showing the information, or I'm choosing the information that I want to show up here. So the first part is dirty. Now what that is, is if I type into a file, Notice it adds this little circle to show that the file I'm on is dirty, meaning, meaning it's had a change that hasn't been saved. Um, since it shows inside of the individual file, I actually don't know that I need that. I might remove the dirty. And again, this is just me just kind of playing around with this, okay? And then it says the active editor medium. So if I come into a regular text file, this shows me the page that I'm on. If it comes uh, come back to settings, it shows me that I'm in settings. All right, so that's kind of uh, kind of useful there. 
The next one is I'm using a separator here. So this is just kind of, I think the built-in separator is just a dash or two dashes. There we go. And then it's got the root name. So one of the things that I might want is the, not just the root name, but the root path. So if I wanted to know exactly what uh, directory I'm in, now you can see it's uh, code demos authenticated to do app with Next.js, Airtable and Auth0. So, and I think I want that a little bit more. And uh, yeah, I think that's good for now. So this is just an example of just how powerful your customization can be with your settings inside of VS Code. Again, there's tons of stuff in here. Go and give it a look and you'll find uh, different things that you might want to customize. All right, the last piece that I wanna show is the shortcuts, so your keyboard shortcuts. And this is uh, really nice because VS Code comes really jam-packed with tons of shortcuts. And I spend lots of times using, lots of time using shortcuts myself. So not only do you have to, not, not only do you have the ability to use the built-in shortcuts, you have the ability to customize them as well. So I do wanna show like one specific example of this and you could customize this to your heart, heart's content, but uh, the new file in here. So I have an extension talking about customization called the advanced uh, new file extension. And what this does is gives me a way to create a new file. If you look in here, if I do command N now, um, it's gonna ask me which directory I want to create this new file in. If I say workspace root and then type in test.js, it's gonna create that file and then open it for me. Now, the reason this is really special for me is I can create the file in the directory I want without having to go to my mouse and then right click and say add new file or click up here, blah, blah, blah. So the one thing I did customize on this is it's uh, key binding is not default, defaultly, not defaulted to command N. It's actually uh, control shift N or something. So the default command N or con control N on Windows uh, is set to do a new untitled file. And what that will do if we unset, can I unset this one? Let's see if we reset this key binding up here, it goes back to that thing. So if you look at, if I do a command N, uh, that's going to create an untitled file, but it's not saved anywhere. So then I have to go and save it. And that's just not a great experience for me. So what I did is I just customized this advanced new file where I want it to be. If you double click and then command, oh, not command, enter. Uh, actually, let me get rid of that. Let me try it again. So uh, command N is the, is the one I'm going for. So now it's set and now I can do my command N up here. So you can customize your shortcuts as much as you want. You can also download or install extensions for key map. So if you like the, the shortcuts inside of Sublime, you can get the Sublime key map. There's one for Adam, 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 Adam. I don't know why I said Adam, but the Adam key map. So if you like Adam as an editor, you can grab all of those too. So if you have, actually, here's a really weird one, uh, the Vim uh, shortcut. So if you really want to go wild and use uh, Vim, you can uh, use the Vim shortcuts in here as well. I don't know. I guess it's just this one up here. So anyway, if you wanted to take this and be really wild, you could do that too. So those are all the different ways that you can customize your VS code. You can set the theme. Cobalt 2 is what I use. Uh, Shades of Purple, uh, Night Owl, Winter is Coming. Those are some of my favorites. You can set the font. I used Fira code for a while. Now I use Cascadia JS enabled with font ligatures. You can have extensions for anything almost that you want, any sort of functionality. You can go in and customize your settings and you can do your shortcuts. So that is a lot that you can do with VS Code. Again, if you're interested in uh, doing the VS Code Superhero course by my friend CodeStacker or Jesse from the CodeStacker channel, there's an exclusive discount below. So otherwise, question of the day for you, what is your favorite way to customize your VS Code and maybe what theme and font are you using? Let me know in the comments below. In the meantime, thanks as always for hanging out and checking out the video and I'll see you in the next one.